team can't wait to just play football. He brings with him Raymond Priester, the fine tailback, who last year set single season rushing marks with 1,322 yards. He will get the football early and often in this game. Now, Mac Brown has some green, inexperienced quarterbacks, so he's going to rely on the considerable skills of Leon Johnson, the fine tailback who can catch and run that football with an equal amount of skill. So we've got some fine tailbacks and some very good football teams going at it here today, vying for position in the ACC. All right, Mark, get on over here. We have a whale of a bail game going on. Michael Jordan made them talk about basketball here, and Lawrence Taylor, number 98, made them talk about football. Times are changing, aren't they, Dean Blevins, downstairs? They are, Mark. You know, there's been a lot of speculation around these parts about an off-season coaching change. Daryl Moody is now the offensive coordinator at Clemson after spending the last eight years as Mac Brown's offensive coordinator right here at North Carolina. A lot of people are saying, well, he knows the Carolina people. They'll have an advantage, but the Carolina people know Moody as well. Trickery will not win this game. Moody told me before the game, just about 15 minutes ago, he said, running and blocking and tackling and all those cliches will win this football game and not necessarily him. Back to you. Great concept, isn't it, Dean? Matt Brown in his ninth year as head coach here at North Carolina says his team is ready to play. They are loose. They took the reins off them, and they are ready to play. Meanwhile, his counterpart on the other side of the field, Coach West, Tommy West, in his third season at Clemson, he really downplays his team's success on the road. We'll talk about that a little bit later. North Carolina winning the toss. They defer Clemson to receive. And the football season is underway. Antoine Edwards takes a knee five yards deep in the end zone. Now the starting quarterback for the Clemson Tigers is Neilon Green, number 15. He's a five foot, 11 inch, 190 pound junior from Yonkers, New York, just off the Hutchinson Parkway. Last year completed over 57% of his passes, and the guy who's improving. And he had an outstanding game against the Tar Heels last year as well. It's first down and 10 from the 20 yard line. Priester and Emery Smith lining up out of the eye. Strength to the right, that's the side they run it to. This is Raymond Priester out to the 28-yard line, brought down by Jomo Leggins, number 21. A look at the starting lineups. Backs and receivers brought to you by Chile. Raymond Priester, the ball carrier on that last play with a nice pickup. No surprise he got the ball in the first play of the game, and usually he gets his big yards in the fourth quarter when he wears down teams behind that. Glenn Roundtree and Jim Bundren, two guys who have started 23 straight games. That's never happened to Clemson before, playing in their freshman and sophomore year. A monument to durability. Second down and two to go. Backs out of the eye again. Priestley this time stuck at the line of scrimmage by that very tough, unforgiving front seven by North Carolina. Brian Simmons is one of the leaders up front. A tremendous group of linebackers. K. Mays led the team at tackles last year, averaging 12 and a half tackles a game. This is a very talented front seven. Meanwhile, we'll look at the safety play. That'll be key for North Carolina today. A lot of inexperience back there. Omar Brown's got to settle down that young bunch, and he's the only guy coming back with experience. John, third down and two to go for the Tigers on their opening possession. Priester getting to the corner and getting the first down. Out over the 30, lunging forward to the 31-yard line, brought down by James Hamilton, the 6'5-inch senior. Raymond Priester from Allendale, South Carolina, set seven Clemson rushing records in 1995. That is a prolific season, my friend. And he runs like a fullback. Uh, he actually beat out Emory Smith two years ago as a fullback. So he has that fullback mentality when he runs the football. And the objective here is just to run right at Carolina here today. First down and 10. The nose of the ball at the 31-yard line. Green hands it off to the fullback this time. That's Emory Smith, his forward progress, taking him out to the 34-yard line. James Hamilton making the tackle. 
Now, you may have heard of a guy named Emmett Smith. Well, this is his younger brother, Emery, out of Pensacola, Florida. But not his little brother, right? <laughs> well, little, figuratively speaking, of course, 241 pounds. He's a load, a marketing major. And he's selling himself right now. And with this offense, he's designed to run the ball inside and to provide lead blocking for Raymond Priester. And his blocking abilities have really improved over the years. Second down and seven to go. Gain of three by Smith. Little play action now. Green almost picked up and broken up nicely by Dre Bly. Number 31 on the corner. One good thing Carolina has is a lot of very good athletes up front who can exert a lot of pressure. Greg Ellis, 87, coming off the corner. Jason Neal on green, and they want to knock him down every chance they get today. Dre Bly drove that football very aggressively. Brian Wolford was the intended receiver, number 25. The ball was a little bit late. Should have been thrown a little bit sooner, but it's hard for a quarterback to get it out going to his left as quickly as he would to his right. That was Green's first pass attempt of the afternoon. Third down and seven. They converted on their first third down opportunity. See if they can do it again. Just underway in the first quarter. Green to pass on the slant incomplete intended for Kenya Crooks. And the Tigers will have to punt. Robert Williams, number 29, slapped it away. Kenya Crooks at 6'3", 204, is supposed to be able to run the slant in against Robert Williams. He's got five inches on him. But both corners have come up big now on consecutive plays. So that's going to give them a lot of confidence as this game progresses. All right, Kevin Laird will punt the ball from his own 21-yard line. Gets off a nice high spiral, driving fly back to the 22. Trying to get outside, and he's brought down nicely that time by number 56, O.J. Childress. Almost forgot something on the way, didn't he? <laughs> A 45-yard punt. Dre, uh, hang on to that thing. We'll be right back. Vince Keldorf, he has never taken a snap as a starting Division I quarterback, so he will be baptized in prison today. Big kid, though. 6'5", 250. He shed 15 pounds to get to that level. And Matt Brown has a lot of confidence in him and his arm and his decision-making. First down and 10 for the Tar Heels. The nose of the ball in the 20-yard line. Three wideouts. They complete the pass to Freddie Jones. The tight end who makes it out over the 25. Where he is down. A look at the backs and receivers brought to you by Chili's. Leon Johnson, the all-purpose back, has a chance to set some more records this season. He can catch the football. I expect him to catch a lot of balls in this offense today. Jeff Saturday leads that front. He's a very good and active center, and he, I expect him to be first team all ACC when this season's over. A little motion up front. Flags down. There's motion on the interior line. Well, when they blow the play dead, it usually means somebody flinched up front. And the left tackle did, Byron Thomas. Now, they're going to call it on him, even though he was brought a little bit off. Ball start on the offense, five yards, still second down. Our man with the white hat today, our referee, Courtney Mozzi. You know, I noticed on the very first play, they got a, a real easy pass out there for uh, Chris Keldorf, and I anticipate today they're going to try and get him settled into this offense with some nice, easy, short completions. Good way to get his confidence burgeoning a little bit. He hands it off this time to Johnson. Breaks two tackles. Johnson then brought down and brought down hard at the 22-yard line by Anthony Simmons, number 41. One more look at the man they call the natural. There's not a whole lot happening for him, but he has such great quickness and elusiveness. And I think, you know, the reason he got dubbed the natural is he never seems to expend that much energy when he's doing anything. Anthony Simmons making that last tackle, number 41, last year's National Freshman of the Year. We'll be calling his name a lot this afternoon. Three wideouts in for the Tar Heels on third down and eight. Keldor 
The out pattern wide open complete to number five, L.C. Stevens. And a Tar Heel first down. A well-thrown ball, John Spagnol. It, it was. He had a lot of time. He's working on Andy Ford, number 43, and Ford fell down. Ford comes in as the dime back, one of the twin brother combinations that plays corner. But he sells the deep route. Got Ford to turn up field. And that's a very nice job by the receiver, allowing that quarterback a lot of room with which to throw the football. L.C. Stevens, a big target at six foot five. Ball at the 34-yard line, first down and ten. They hand it off to the natural, and he stopped at the 35-yard line. Johnson brought down by number 92, Brett Williams, and O.J. Childress, number 56. A look at the secondary for the Clemson Tigers, led by Dexter McLeon. Peter Ford, one of the two Ford twins. Tough to tell those two apart. Johnson, meanwhile, has now gone over 4,000 all-purpose yards in his career with that carry. Ball to 35. Beldor passing complete again. Out to Johnson, who has a first down at the 49-yard line. Andy Ford making the stop. This is the very, very second pass of today's game, and that was the play in which L.C. Stevens just ran a simple out route. Nothing too complicated so far for Keldorf. Now here's where you want to get the ball to Leon, who works inside out on the linebacker. You can see you know, he runs a nice option route, and he told Mark and me on the field that those are the kind of things he's anxious to do in this offense today. Leon Johnson. Pumped up for this game today. Johnson and Watson out of the eye. Johnson on the toss. This time, the Tigers string it out nicely. Anthony Simmons one more time. The second tackle of the afternoon, bringing down Johnson at the 49-yard line. Simmons from Spartanburg, South Carolina, the only defensive player to ever be named to the UPI Freshman of the Year team. The only Freshman of the Year by the UPI. He's talented. Oh, he sure is. And they set this defense up for him. They're going to protect him. They're going to keep defensive linemen on offensive linemen so he can roam that whole football field. And he can flat out just run people down. Second down and 10. McGregor now in for Johnson. They hand it off to Chris Watson, who's brought down. May have lost a couple of yards on the play. Tony Planton and Raheem Abdullah ganging up to make the tackle. It's going to be third down and long now for the Tar Heels. Take a look at Anthony Simmons, number 41. You see how he just waits patiently. He has the speed, and he can break the angles of the blockers. He's a very hard guy to get a clean hit on, and that's what makes him so adept at tackling. 150 tackles last year for that man. Four wide receivers set now for North Carolina on third down and long. Keldorf with time. Underneath, a nice grab, but it'll be way short of the first down. Darren Ashford making the catch. Peter Ford making the tackle. And North Carolina, in all likelihood, will punt. Yeah, they look like they're making a decision, but I think at this point in the game, their defense has played well. I'm very impressed with Chris Keldorf so far. He's shown a lot of poise. Although he has not been rushed yet, he's 4 for 4 for 37 yards. So you can't ask for any more from him, and they may very well let this uh, clock go down and take a penalty if they don't get the fun off in time. But Keldorf doing a nice job. That's got to make Mac Brown feel very good about the way his offense could run today. David Sechrist into punt, and Antoine Edwards is standing on his own 15-yard line for Clemson, and they could take the penalty or refuse it. We could get in the early cat and mouse game they play with this. Dead ball. The way of the game on the offense, five yards, fourth down. Look at Mac Brown. This will allow Derek DeBreeze to get a little better kick. And instead of trying to pooch it, he can pretty much try and angle it if he, he's got a lot of room. This one goes sky high. Caught by Edwards on the five. 
Not sure about the wisdom yep. of that, John Spagnuolo. He broke the cardinal rule. Heels at 10. If it goes over your head, let it go into the end zone. A 46-yard punt, four on the return. We'll be back in just a minute. Lasting trucks on the road. Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. The Corral Corporation, makers of Corral Word Perfect Sweet. And Dean Witter. There are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. I'm Mark Jones in the house along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins working the sidelines. Zeros on the scoreboard with 7.25 remaining in the first quarter. The season opener in the ACC for both North Carolina and Clemson. Clemson with the ball on its own nine-yard line. Priester and Smith in the backfield. The give is to Emery Smith, who's brought down right at the line of scrimmage by number 96, Russell Davis. Trying to free up that fullback. Russell Davis with good inside penetration. You know, Clemson is going to run Smith up the middle to keep that defense honest and then try and get Priester out the perimeter. But down here, they don't want to make any mistakes turning the football over. This field position is a result of Antoine Edwards maybe using some poor judgment, catching the ball inside his 10 on the punt. Green rolling out, backside pressure. He gets it away in time. Is it complete or not? We're still waiting, and it is a completion at the 19-yard line to Joe Woods from Union, South Carolina. And that is right near a first down. Joe Woods doing an excellent job of beating bump and run coverage. You know, with a young secondary, North Carolina, they're still going to step up. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator, told us he is going to step up and play bump and run with those young secondary guys. And it was actually very good coverage, but Woods did a terrific job getting open. Third down and one. They go over the top to the fullback. It's going to be close. Emery Smith with his dependable sure hands on the carry that Brian time. Simmons on the tackle. Brian Simmons making the tackle, number 41 for North Carolina. And his dependable 241 pounds going forward yeah. with the shoulders well. <laughs> it's a little easier to be dependable with that kind of load. A look at our officiating crew for today. Headed by Courtney Mozzie. Clemson settling down here on offense now. It has been a very tumultuous time for them over the past six, seven months. Their head coach, Tommy West, pulling in the reins on his crew. It is first down and 10, and flags down. And while we see an infraction here, let's take a look at some of the new rule changes this year in college football. Get the call first from... Dead ball, delay of the game, on the offense, five yards, first down. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, you know, two safety rules here. It's number three and number five. One is the helmet comes off on the ball carrier. The ball play is blown dead, and they start from right there. The long snapper is finally protected, and that's because there's been a series of injuries over the year. Number one, the towel rule. I just don't get it. <laughs> it is a rule that doesn't allow everybody to wear towels, and I just don't know why that rule was made, and I'll try and figure out why it was at some point. When you do, tell me. Fortunately, <laughs> most players wear... Uh, gloves and they don't need towels anymore but it what they're trying to do is eliminate the players that are running around with flags waving and they just had a rule before but as tommy west told us they didn't enforce it and they could have kept it the way it was before and speaking of towels there's neil and greens Priest on that last carry five oh five remaining in the first quarter neither team has scored yet Clemson winning last year's clash between these two by a score of 17 to 10. Four wideouts now for the Tigers. Green rolling out of the pocket. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Woods had his hands on it and could have caught that one. That was a catchable ball. Yeah, Woods at 5'9", 160. Laid out at the very end of this play. I think Neilon Green's largely been on target most of the game. And he sells out, and that ball just slips right through. And Woods doesn't hold on to that football. Tough catch. It was, but it was a good offensive play by Clemson. They did have something there in the passing game. There's Woods. 
out of Union, South Carolina, former transfer from Mississippi. Had a 30-yard touchdown catch last year in this game. Green on the flanker screen completes it, but Crooks is brought down immediately. Hey, it's Dre's day, isn't it? So far, he's made two tackles. Well, you know, one thing that they told us about Dre Bly is that he's very aggressive. And I think uh, the coaches are a little bit tentative about a freshman being aggressive. He's one-on-one -on -one here. Now Lyman is going to come out. It's going to be Jim Bundren, number 79. He's going to try and clip him at the last second. Uh-uh. This freshman's got some savvy. He read that play and made a terrific stop. Johnson's going to get an opportunity to return this, but he elects to go for the fair catch. The North Carolina Tar Heels will have very good field position when we come back after that 41-yard punt. Monday night, the biggest names in the history of professional football share their memories with us in a one-hour primetime special. Join us for ABC's Monday Night Football Mania and the Chicago Bears host Troy Aikman and the world champion Dallas Cowboys on the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Check your local listings for the action Monday night here right here on ABC Sports. I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins. It is 0-0, North Carolina and Clemson here deep on Tobacco Road on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Chris Keldorf, their starting quarterback, is on fire so far. Four for four for a total of 37 yards and he'll start off with good field position here with the nose of the ball on the 43. And here's a new formation. Four wide receivers on first down for the Tar Heels. Part of that new pro-style attack by Matt Brown. Keldorf intercepted. Number 53, Raheem Abdullah, takes it away for the Tigers. It's something that haunted the Tar Heels in last year's game, and the turnover bug rears its ugly head one more time. That's right, that's been the difference. Five interceptions last year. Keldorf, it's a simple zone. And Abdullah the freshman is dropping in his zone. Now he settles down and works back and steps right in front of the intended receiver, Jason Peace, number 19. A good job by Abdullah. And there you can see Keldorf just tries to flick it in there. But Abdullah says, uh-uh, I tricked you. Gave him the old left fake and right fake and took that ball away. Now the Tigers with propitious field position. Priester. Brought down at the 46-yard line. Gang tackled K. Mays, the All-CC selection from a year ago, making the tackle. We talked about the Clemson Tigers and the very tumultuous offseason. They have a handle on things now, but beginning in January, they had eight players charged with different crimes. And Tommy West, the head coach, gathered his team and got things straightened out since that time. The toss is to Priester. Can't get to the corner. Swarmed again. Well, you know, today there was uh, additional bad news. Trevor Price, the transfer from Michigan, has been suspended for two games. And Iris Price is also suspended as they look at some of his high school transcripts. So it has not ended. And when I said it was a tumultuous offseason, that meant right up until pregame today, things are still happening for this Clemson team. It's not easy being a head coach. You are asked to do so many things. Be a father, be a mother, be a coach, be an administrator. Four wideouts in the game for Clemson on third and ten. Green looking to pass. That's where he can hurt you when he scrambles. And it's incomplete. Intended for number seven, Tony Horn. Omar Brown, the leader in the secondary in his safety position, breaking that one up. It'll be fourth and ten. Well, you expect Omar Brown, the only experienced player back there, not to get beaten deep in that play. And that football hung up there a long time, and he had no problem driving to bat it away. Gray Bly standing on his 10-yard line. The punt <laughs> goes out of bounds by Laird. For more of that Clemson story down to Dean. 
You know, Mark, despite the turbulent offseason that you just documented, the Clemson officials are obviously pleased with the job Tommy West is doing. They've given him a contract extension through the year 2000. You know, he told us earlier in the week that he met with the team after the problems, and he seemed got a sense that they were really embarrassed about it. They've had no problems since then. He feels good about it, and he feels that he did the right thing, and everyone respects the job that they did. All right, Dean, you know that contract extension reflects what the administration thinks of Tommy West at Clemson and his coaching staff. It's a credit to his staff as well as the administration. To toss to Johnson. Up to the 22-yard line. A busy day in college football. Let's go back to John in New York. Get to John Saunders in just a moment. Second down and six to go. Split back formation this time. Johnson again on the carry, making it out to the 27-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. John's there. John, are you there? Take it away. Always standing by, Mark, and ready to bring you the scores and highlights, beginning with Bowling Green against Alabama. You know they switch quarterbacks back and forth between Faust and Kitchens. Warren Faust in there to Marcel West, six yards. Alabama takes a 14-0 lead, and that's where it stands right now in the second quarter. Mark, back to you. All right, John, you think about coaches that face a lot of heat. Imagine some of the scrutiny that Gene Stallings faces down in Alabama. Uh, he had to rearrange his staff going into this year. He faces it every year. Johnson has the first down. With a nice run over the right side. Make that the left side. Chris Jones making the tackle that time. Well, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team to date. Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Talking about the hardships of coach, and despite Gene Stalling's success, they still sometimes want to run him out of there. Can't understand that mentality. The ball batted away downfield by number 53, Raheem Abdullah. Almost had himself another interception. You know, here's a kid who never played in the college game before today. And he's playing like a savvy old veteran. I mean, there's a lot of great linebackers in this football game. But if anybody stepped up and made his name known, it's Raheem Abdullah so far. Abdullah with great speed. Along with Anthony Simmons. Second down and 10 for North Carolina. Still 0-0. 30 seconds to go. Johnson with a gaping hole. And Leon Johnson is looking pretty natural right now. Johnson down at the one-yard line. Natural talent by a natural runner. Clemson defense rolled the dice defensively. And North Carolina caught him in a blitz. You'll see the middle linebacker. Let's watch Simmons or Mont Wilson coming right up the middle on a blitz. See if you can see him flash there. That's number 42. There's nobody in that gap. As soon as he gets blocked, Johnson has the ability and the speed to break through. Leon Johnson with a 67-yard pull to Carolina Blue. And there's Simmons getting knocked. Just picked off a little bit. He tried to come underneath, and I don't know if that's the best thing to do with a blitz from the inside. Back side of the eye. A little movement up front. Johnson again. He's in. Touchdown, North Carolina. Leon Johnson. Now you know why they call him the natural. Much to the chagrin of Tommy West of Clemson. I tell you, that drive is on the offensive line who has played very well so far today. Leon Johnson, 8 for 86. 10.8 average in the touchdown. But they are dominating. They average 291 pounds across the board, and they're playing very well so far. 
Josh McGee now in for the extra point out of the hold of Derek DeVries. And it's right down Main Street. Leon Johnson from Morgantown, North Carolina. It's going to be tough replacing him next year, something Matt Brown doesn't look forward to, but he had some great things to say about him yesterday. Leon is very unselfish. He can do everything. He's maybe one of the best blockers on our football team. He's got the best hands of any uh, running back out of the backfield I've ever seen or ever coached. And he's a guy that's very durable. He can touch the ball 30, 35 times a game and make something happen with it. Matt Brown telling us he wanted that man to touch the ball 20 to 25 times today. And he'll take his chances by doing that. And he can throw it, too. He's three for five, thrown the football. He was drafted by the San Francisco Giants out of high school as a baseball player. I mean, this kid really, and he stayed at North Carolina for his senior year. He didn't feel like he had a great junior year. There were some things he wanted to accomplish through the team and personally. Give him credit. With so many guys chasing the cash, it's nice to see somebody stay around for a good senior year. Johnson, during the summer, worked at Michael Jordan's car dealership. <laughs> Wouldn't say exactly what he did, but he said he did work. <laughs> Wasn't a salesman either. Sold a lot of people on his talent, though, on that last drive. Tony Horn is back with Clemson, along with Antoine Edwards. Brian Schmitz kicking off for the Tar Heels. It's 7 to nothing with four seconds to play in the first quarter. This is Horn. Finding a seam. Tony Horn back at you. Down to the Carolina 41-yard line, brought down by Reggie Love. But a nice return by Tony TNT Horn. And that will be the end of the first quarter of play. Leon Johnson's touchdown, giving North Carolina a 7-0 lead. Yeah, Leon, you can smile. We'll be right back. Under a cloudy sky on a warm afternoon, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, it's seven to nothing for the home squad. Look at our first quarter numbers. Pretty even, John, in terms of time of possession, but the important number is seven to nothing on the board. That's right, and the rushing yards, of course, that's 84 yards, mostly on that long touchdown run by Johnson. And the one turnover has hurt North Carolina. They'd be doing a lot better in this game. And I'll tell you what, that must be Superman's cape they're putting on him. I mean, he's it. It's, it's 90 degrees down there today, and he's wearing a cape on the sideline. That means he hasn't even warmed up yet, Mark. <laughs> Is there a phone booth down there, too? <laughs> a very gregarious, uh, pleasant young man. Had a nice visit with him yesterday. Ball is on the 42-yard line. The Tigers with good field position on first and 10. Smith and Priester out of the eye. The option package, Green keeps it himself and gained maybe a yard, tackled by Andre Purvis and Greg Ellis. Great job by Greg Ellis, 87, playing that pitch. You know, last year in this football game with Clemson won 17 to 10, they ran the option effectively. And Greg Ellis on that play was well-schooled as to play not only the quarterback, but the pitch man as well. Yes, you talk about the option, and Neil on Green, they've put more teeth into the offense this year, and they expect him to do more things to get that offense into and out of more plays. Backs out of the eye, three wideouts for the Tigers. Priester brought down after a gain of about two yards by Andre Purvis around the ball again, the six foot four inch, 294 pound senior. Coaches call him an outstanding athlete and he's just developing a little bit of consistency right now. He needs to stay in his rush lanes a little bit better, and that's what he did on that play. You know, Clemson's approach is similar to what they did last year, and that's run right at North Carolina, but that front seven is bulked up in the offseason. They're about 15 pounds heavier. Put their beds in the weight room. Third down and seven. Green on the swing pass out of the backfield. Incomplete intended for Priester. Time for the Tigers to punt. This North Carolina defense, you can feel their confidence burgeoning right now. Really growing. 13-37 to play in the first half. And you got to wonder how much they miss Antoine Wyatt today, the gentleman who left school. 
he had a big role in last year's victory and he's the kind of guy that uh, Neil on green would like to get the football too but he is no longer in school Kevin Lair to punt standing on his own 46 yard line Ray Bly standing on the 10 for North Carolina only for the fair catch lets it bounce nice punt by Lair puts it inside the 20 it'll be marked at approximately the nine yard line Brad Pope downing it on the 29 yard punt we're gonna get our breath and uh, stay with us we'll be back right after this in premiere Sarah Jessica Parker co-stars in LA story it's all part of ABC Sunday night lineup starting with America's Funniest Home Videos and Lois and Clark tomorrow night you know where right here on ABC 1328 to play in the first half McGregor and Watson working out of the eye that's McGregor now in motion Geldorf hands it off to Watson the fullback who plows his way over the 13 out to the 14 yard line and look at the push that offensive line got I mean uh, here is a group that's veteran they've been around a lot of them have experience. The defensive line for Clemson, on the other hand, has no experience, no starters in the defensive line returning. And right now, the difference in the game is Jeff Saturday, 64, and his friends up front are just doing a much better job of rooting out the Tiger defense. And Thomas, Gethers, Honeycutt, and Baxter. A senior, a senior, a senior, and a junior. You called it experience. Johnson back in the ball game at tailback. A little drop play, Johnson. Brought down nicely at the 13-yard line by Brett Williams, the converted linebacker. Williams started seven games a year ago. Took Eric Bradford's spot. Bradford slowed by an ankle injury. Well, this puts the Tigers in a place defensively where they can fake a blitz or do something. This is the first time Keldorf has been deep in his territory trying to convert offensively. Third down and seven. Split backs. Geldorf throws it, and it's complete at the 24-yard line and a first down for North Carolina. L.C. Stevens, a tall, lanky receiver, worked on Peter Ford, turned him on the out pattern to make the catch. And that is quite a catch. Look how he lays out, comes back, gets that ball, gets his arms underneath the football. A little help from Mac Brown and friends are always going to help those officials make the call. But all we heard about this young man is all he needs is some game time experience. And I'm not so sure that ball didn't touch the ground. It looked like it might have. And we have the benefit of replay. Quick three step drop, Stevens back again. About two yards short of the first down, working on Peter Ford, one of the two Ford twins, Stevens from Clinton, North Carolina. And there's Ford, the DB that he's working on, one half of the Ford twins, had an interception in this game last year, as did his brother Andy Ford, a number 43. Tough to tell those two apart. Well, you can see that tattoo on his right bicep there. That's how they tell one another apart. They tattoo their names on their bicep. Yeah, but the coaches haven't caught on yet. <laughs> 11.06 to play in the half. Johnson looking patiently for a hole right near that first down marker, and it looks as if he has the first down. Tackled by Anthony Simmons. And I never thought about that, but if you're a twin brother, you could never really get yelled at in the film room. I mean, you could always say, no, coach, that wasn't me. It was my brother. <laughs> hey, you had a bad technique there. No, that wasn't me. That was, that was my twin brother. <laughs> be a great way to go through life. Look at Keldorf who, aside from that one interception that he threw earlier, has played very well this afternoon. Keldorf, the junior college transfer from California. He's six of eight for 57 yards. Linton and Johnson in the backfield. Keldorf looked for Johnson. And it's dropped by Linton, who was wide open. Carolina, John likes to use those fullbacks as receivers. Linton shaking his head, running back to the tent, the, the huddle, probably saying, "My bad." Well, Keldorf has not been pressured. You'd mentioned how well he's played. I was about to mention he has not been pressured today. 
there, even though he was pressured a little bit, nobody really got in his face, but he showed a knowledge of this offense. And for guys just came in, he knew where his uh, secondary and third receivers were on that play. Linton just dropping the pass. Linton and McGregor now. The back split behind Keldor. Second down and 10. Complete over the middle to Freddie Jones. Let's go back to New York and John Saunders, who has something on the Wolverines. Mark, along with Todd Blackledge here, Illinois against Michigan. Scott Dreisbach goes into a little scrambling here after dropping back and takes off, Todd. Boy, he shows, first of all, his strength to break a couple tackles, and when he gets in the open field, good speed for a quarterback. If you're not getting it done throwing the ball, use your legs instead. Takes it all the way for the touchdown. Michigan on the board, leading now 7-0. Mark, back to you. Yeah, John, ask Todd the last time he ran that fast. <laughs> oh, you're brutal. Well, you know, Dreisbach thumb look okay, squeezing that football, running down the field. He, of course, the guy who uh, played four games last year for the Wolverines and then hurt his thumb and didn't play the rest of the year. Nice to see him come back from that injury. We have a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Next Saturday, it's a college football double dip on ABC Sports. In regional action at noon Eastern, mostly you'll see Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, or Michigan State against number one Nebraska. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Duke tries to tackle third-ranked Florida State or other regional action. John and I will be doing the Penn State game up in State College. They take on Louisville. Don't forget to call your cable operator for the pay-per-view games available in your area. It is third down and four to go for North Carolina. Linton and McGregor are the backs. They're three of four on third down conversions. Over the middle, wide open. It's a first down, the pass complete to Nay Brown. And Nay says yay. The receiver who has the best hands on the crew. Nay Brown got cleared out by his tight end. Freddie Jones works that out. You see him clear out of field. Number 18 comes underneath him. That's where the tight end and the wide receiver have a high-low option for the quarterback. See the tight end, 92. He clears out upfield, occupies the safety. Might have got away with a little offensive interference there. And Nay Brown comes underneath. A nice, short pass that keeps the chains moving. And that's what Greg Davis, who came over from Georgia, brings to this offense. The same coach that helped Eric Zier develop, Johnson. Out to the 48-yard line. Carolina with a new look this year, offensively, as well as on their media guide, and a new mascot as well. Dean Blevins has more on that. Dean? Well, that mascot is Ramesses the 16th, and the kids adore this animal, and it follows a, just a tragic incident last winter where Ramesses the 15th was murdered, was slaughtered and butchered, actually, and the children around the area were very, very scared. They have this with the new one, Ramesses the 16th. The kids feel better, better about it, and they're all proud of him. Have him on the program, and uh, he's back. He's ready to go. He told me some confidential information. We'll tell you later. <laughs> Dean's always getting those scoops. He's unbelievable. Second down and nine. Downfield to Brown. Complete. There's a flag down at the 20-yard line, and there's a flag down back at the 47 as well. Dexter McLeon was beaten on the play by Brown. Rather. They'll be bringing this back from holding. And they're talking about it right now. There's also a flag downfield, so we'll probably have offsetting penalties. And 62 Honeycutt comes out, and yeah, he gets beat inside pretty badly right there. And there's the takedown. On the offense, pass interference on the defense. Penalties offset, second down. And we'll play it again. So Honeycutt came out to cut off the penetration of Adrian Dingle. I like the way Keldor said, hey, I have confidence in my receivers. I'm going to put it downfield. Let them make the play. And that's the interference by McLeon as Brown works underneath. I'm impressed with Brown so far in this game, Mark. Yeah, Brown has played well. And at 6-1, you team him, him, him up, John, with the 6-foot, 5-inch L.C. Stevens. They've got some height and a little bit of speed at the receiver position. Second down and nine after the offsetting penalties. Four wideouts for the Tar Heels. Keldorf making his first Division I start. Throws an incompletion to Octavius Brown 
number four. He is a key element of this offense, but he might not be today because of his injury. He tore up a knee in their bowl game in January, and the head coach, Matt Brown, says that he probably doesn't expect him to make a significant contribution until about three weeks from now. Well, tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. That includes, of course, the professional debut of Tiger Woods. Our coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 3 Central time, and Pacific here on ABC Sports. Third down, nine to go. Four wideouts in again for the Tar Heels. Under pressure, Keldorf is down at the 43. That's the first time the Tiger defense has swallowed him up this afternoon. Tony Planton and Mond Wilson led the charge. Clemson brought the blitz. Anthony Simmons put pressure on. Keldorf did the right thing and not trying to throw the football into coverage. But that was one time where Clemson finally has been able to exert pressure on Keldorf. Into punt is Derek DePriest. And Antoine Edwards is standing at his own 20-yard line. Ellis Johnson probably happy about that last series by the Clemson defense. Edwards fields it. Oh, he got a great block by Simmons. And he fumbled it. He put it on the ground. Carolina says they have it, and so do the officials. And that great block looks like it was a clip. There's a flag on the field. in the back on the return on the receiving team Finley is the climb first down again McLeon catches the ball inside his own 10 yard line and right here's the clip by Simmons right there in the back he just doesn't get his head on the inside of the defender coming downfield now let's see who knocks the ball loose Get another look at that play, but I, I think McLeon's got to learn not to catch the ball back there. Bad things happen. There's the clip. Let's see who gets their hand in there. Looks like it's number nine gets his hand in there, knocks that ball away. It's a great job by Keith Newman, the outside linebacker, playing special teams. So that's a huge turnover, and this is the mirror image of what's happened in the past in North Carolina. They get the big turnover in this game, and that has not happened for them in games against Clemson in recent years. Well, they've given one away. And they've been on the good side of a turnover now. We'll be right back after this. College football action continuing tonight on ESPN. The Panthers of Pitt look to avenge a stunning 21-0 defeat last year, but the Mountaineers have other plans. West Virginia, Pitt, the backyard brawl tonight. 7.30 Eastern only on ESPN. Now, to say that this game is important for North Carolina, important to win for North Carolina, would be an understatement. Look at that daunting schedule. And those are teams in orange that they all lost to last year, including today's game against Clemson. So five out of their six games to open the season are against teams that they lost to last year. And here they come. This is Leon Johnson. Bouncing nimbly outside, a plant down at the 14-yard line. Johnson down at the 11-yard line, brought down by number 43, the other half of the twin combination, Andy Ford. Freddie Jones and Adrian Dingle going at it after that play. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, first down. So that nice run by Johnson negated as a result of the penalty. Freddie Jones, number 92, going against 52, Dingle. Now you can see them going at it, going at Dingle trying to disengage. Jones keeps working against them. I don't think that's where the penalty was called, but there was a little extracurricular going on after that. Nothing wrong with that. Freddie Jones, a very good tight end on a lot of All-American preseason teams. Healthy competition, 7-13 to play in the first half. First and 14 to go, Keldorf to pass. Completes the pass to Jones at the 22-yard line. Roughed up there by Brad Pope, number 31, the strong safety. 
Hope, the 5'10", 195 pound senior, Keldorf on the money that time. You know, Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, told us a story where uh, he saw him in the offseason and said, how much do you weigh? And he said, uh, 255. And he said, well, next time, don't answer that question so honestly, will you please? <laughs> he said, lie to me. <laughs> Tell me you're lighter. The linemen all love his disposition and size. The fact that he's a big guy at over 250 pounds. Second down, 12 to go. Uh, a dangerous uh -oh. pass. Boy, Raheem Abdullah had six points rung up on the cash register before he caught the ball. And Abdullah again making his presence known in that pass defense. He has one interception. He's batted another away, and he should have had that for an interception. And quarterback Keldor, now he looked to his right first and threw this blindly backfield to Johnson. And Johnson said, oh, my, we've got a problem here. So Keldor gets away with a major no-no on offense. Abdullah could have, in all probability, three picks by now. Third down and 12, four wideouts for North Carolina. It's trips left. Out of the shotgun. Keldor stepping up, and he's tackled at the 20-yard line. Good coverage that time by the North Carolina secondary. That young, inexperienced secondary, Mond Wilson, the linebacker, stepping up to make the tackle. So now in comes the field goal unit for the North Carolina Tar Heels, a field goal unit that has practiced hard and arduously all month long. They practice so much that the coach says everyone thinks there's something wrong with it. Josh McGee in to attempt a field goal. The ball will be spotted at the 27-yard line. It's a 37-yarder. We saw him kick a 57-yard field goal in practice on Thursday afternoon. Out of the hold of Derek DePriest. And this one is right down Main Street. And that ground bar rate just went down from 100 to 80. <laughs> Practice pace, coach. North Carolina taking a 10 0 lead, courtesy of McGee. And he has a real smooth leg, doesn't he, Mark? We saw him in practice, even from 57. He did not change his delivery in terms of approaching the football and kicking it. More on the kicking day from Dean Blevins. Well, oh, guys, Mac Brown was really concerned coming into this game about the youthful, and I stress youthful, kicking game, but so far, so good. He knows they will be good eventually, but take a look at this graphic, and this will illustrate it. The field goal snapper the snapper for the punts, the extra points, field goals, all these guys. Schmitz just turned 18 years of old, of age rather. The holder, DePriest, the pooch punter, Seacrest, not even listed. None of those guys has ever stepped on a college football playing field. So Mac Brown was roaming the sidelines before the game. We all talked to him, you know, he said, who are you going with? And he finally picked them out. But that's a remarkable stat. They have a big future ahead of them though. And when you get a close-up look of McGee, check out his chin. John, I'm not sure. John and Dean, ask him if he started shaving yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he hits his field goal, and North Carolina has two punts for 48 yards today. So, so far, that inexperience has not hurt the Tar Heels one bit. Certainly has, and North Carolina trying to snap a two-game losing streak against Clemson. Brian Schmitz now with the kickoff. Antoine Edwards and Tony Horn back deep for Clemson. This will be Tony Horn at the five. Weaving his way, still on his feet. Over the 25 to the 26-yard line. Clemson down 10 to nothing. Schmitz with a nice kickoff. Horn on the return. The tackle made by Sean Woodward that time. What does Clemson have to do, John, offensively? They seem to be a little bit out of sync, especially their quarterback. Well, they came into the game with the experience at the skill positions. And one thing's for sure, they're not running the football effectively up front. And everything in their offense works off an ability to run the football. And they're not getting that big push on first down, and that's hurting everything else they do. Here's Priester trying to get this offense untracked. Now that's Clemson football right there. Get the ball to Priester, let him get five or six yards, run the play action off of that, and then all of a sudden this offense becomes a lot more effective. Priester last year had a single game average of over 110 yards per game running the ball. Look at Priester from Allendale, South Carolina, an elementary education major. 
Second down and five, 4.43 to play in the first half. Priester, an education in tough running that time. Digging down to the 36-yard line. A lot happening in the Big Ten today, isn't it, John Saunders? Indeed, Mark, and defense is the order of the day. Scott Dreisbach hands off to Clarence Williams. He's hit by Brown. The fumble's recovered by Dreisbach, but it's a safety as Willis pounces on him. Illinois on the board with a deuce, 7-2. Mark. That's the first safety that I've seen this season, John. Some things never change for Illinois, too. Right? Yeah. They always have the defense, and they never seem to move it on offense. Yeah. Great linebackers at that school. Neilon Green is just two of seven this afternoon. Little movement on the right side by the right tackle, Holland Postel. For Clemson. And you can hear one of the Clemson coaches' voices intoning vehemently. Dead ball. False start. On the offense. Five yards. First down. He had a tackles in that set where his hand's not on the ground but he just flashed a little bit soon it allows him to get into his pass blocking position that much quicker but a little flinch like that and it sets back clemson now five yards it is first down 15 to go 401 to play in the first half trips left by the tigers green on the option priester priester out to the 39 Brian Simmons and Jomo Leggins making the tackle. I've been impressed with this North Carolina defense this afternoon. And you can hear the hitting on the sidelines. Leggins put that hit on Priester as he came over. Clemson offensively spread everything out. Then they get the ball to Priester. Now that defense is spread out, and you see players engaged all over. But look how well this Carolina defense runs. And look at that hit at the end by Leggins. It is second down and six to go. Four wideouts for the Tigers. Working on those corners, inexperienced corners for the Tar Heels. Green completes the pass on North Carolina's side of midfield to the 49-yard line. Brian Wolford made the catch. Brown making the tackle. And it's a first down for Clemson. Well, just the way you draw it up, you want the quarterback to bobble the ball for three or four <laughs> seconds, then throw the football out. And Wolford, the true freshman, stands in there, and oh, he gets hit all of a sudden. Green gets a sandwich, and Wolford got a sandwich at the other end. But both players executed the play and did what they had to do. As a result, first down and 10, the toss. Priester trying to get to the perimeter of that defense. Can't get there. Brought down at the 47-yard line by James Hamilton, the converted defensive lineman with 4-6 speed. Easy for me to say. Guys so fast. This linebacking core, rated by many people as perhaps the best in the entire country. And you've got some good backups there as well. We, we met with Brandon Spoon yesterday, a freshman who they're all excited about. He's a very fine linebacker. But I'm impressed with their ability to cover ground sideline to sideline. They, these kids can really play well together. Second down and nine. Green with a play fake. Going up top, has a man on the slant, incomplete. Intended for Woods. Robert Williams, the sophomore, staying right with Woods. And that's the man-to-man -man coverage that was gonna be the focus and matchup and perhaps deciding factor of this game, John. And so far, the Tar Heels are winning that edge. Williams is a converted strong safety. He's a backup strong safety in the spring. They moved him over the quarterback. And so far today, I'm very impressed with the play of the corners. On the passes that the Tigers have been able to catch today, they have never really beaten anybody that well. Four wideouts in. For Clemson on third down and nine. 2.35 to play. They throw it back on the flanker screen. Complete to Crooks but he's way short of the first down. Tito Simpson making the tackle. And, and there's that speed I'm talking about. That's a defensive lineman who's able to hustle over and make the play. Much to the chagrin of Tommy West. Just outside the 47 yard line. Fourth and 2 3 to play. Laird Kevin Laird punting. 
from his own Dre 39. Bly Dre Bly standing on his own 10 for North Carolina. Bly calling for the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Let's throw it back to New York and check in with John Saunders. John? Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll have the scores and highlights. Plus, I'll be joined by my new partner, Todd Blackledge, who's breaking down tape already as we speak, and he'll have a closer look at the top five. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. All right, we're back. Hey, if it can be broken down, Todd will. 149 to play in the first half. Did he break down film with, when you worked with him? <laughs> well, <laughs> Thursdays and Fridays. <laughs> Todd knows the X's and O's, doesn't he? <laughs> After that 36-yard punt. They punch it out to the 13-yard line with 140 to play in the first half. That was Maurice McGregor, the 6'3", 240-pound junior. Eric Bradford making the stop in the play. Well, you got to think with just over a minute left in this game, the Tar Heels aren't going to force the situation offensively. They're happy with a 10-point win. This is much better than they played against the Tigers in years past. Yeah, last year they only scored 10 points all game against Clemson. They're losing 17 to 10. Backs out of the eye with 105 to play in the first half. McGregor again in place of Leon Johnson. Johnson taking a well-deserved rest right now. The tackle made by Anthony Simmons while Clemson uses one of its timeouts. 59 seconds to play in the first half. Let's check in on some more shows here on ABC. The city. Spin City. Michael J. Fox has the ambitious young deputy mayor. And the girlfriend, always full of surprises. My lease, that ran out a few weeks ago. Oh, so then, uh, we live together. I can't believe this is such a big deal to you. Mike, we're each other's in case of emergency. Please notify person. Coming to ABC Tuesdays after Home Improvement. I can't breathe. Michael J. Fox in Spin City, two weeks from Tuesday. You might want to notify yourself. All right, back in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, I'm Mark Jones along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins down at the sidelines. You see the score, 59 seconds to play in the first half. Leon Johnson had an impressive running to, uh, clinic, actually, in the first quarter. Run, running for over 80 yards, 84 yards on the scoring drive. And a look at some of his numbers. Impressive, to say the least. And that's why he said he wanted to stick around. He's got some more career yards that he wants to garner up. 107 all-purpose yards today. Most of those came on the ground. I thought he'd catch more passes than the offense today, but I, I think Carolina surprised himself with the success they've had on the ground. And You know in any sport, college football, high school football, professional football, if you run it on the ground and you're doing well, don't try and fix it. It ain't broke. Yep. Back ground. Pretty much stoic and expressionless on the sideline. His players really love playing for him. This is Priester out to the 24-yard line. Check that. That's number 27, Jonathan Linton. Now Carolina's going to call timeout. You know, Clemson had one left. If they had been able to hold on third down, they would have called the timeout. Now they're more than happy to see this half end, and, and Carolina's going to try and figure out what they want to try and do offensively since they're in a little bit better field position. John, we had a nice visit with head coach Mac Brown a couple of days ago, and he was telling us about some of the influences on his coaching philosophy. Barry Switzer was one of them. He said he learned how to keep players focused but loose at the same time, and the importance of having fun in football from Barry Switzer. Worked for Jerry Stovall as well, taking bits and pieces of his leadership philosophy, and Rich Williamson as well, another guy he worked for, who was from the Broyles School of Football. So, Coach Mac Brown molding all of those things together. And the important thing for Mac Brown is how to have fun while still winning football games. Here's what he had to say about it. We, we feel like that it, it is a sport. It is supposed to be fun. 
And uh, it's amazing to me sometimes as coaches, we, we know we get fired if we lose. We know the pressure on coaches day to day. So if we're not careful, we come into a game worried and uptight, and we send a message to our players that we're not really confident in your abilities. We're not really sure you're ready to play. So as a coach, we've already done all we can do. There'll be some decisions we make today that might make a, give us some different options during the game, might turn the, the game around, but the guys have to make the plays. We just make the decisions. That's why he's paid. First and 10, 52 seconds to play in the first half. A little backside pressure. Keldorf almost picked off. And from the Carolina sideline, you can hear a collective huge sigh of relief. That ball seemed like it was in the air for a long time. There's a flag down at the 28-yard line. And we have a player injured on the field. But, you know, just getting back to what Mac Brown had talked about, we were at their Thursday practice. The coaches aren't even allowed on the field when they run their final plays during practice. He said, hey, listen, it's too late now. We can't be coaching them up two days before the game. It tells the players that there's some things we're worried about. So he allows the players to run the game. It's a game-like situation with the 25-second clock and everything else. You got it. You know, it's a very impressive organization. It all starts with this man right here. Adrian Dingle is the injured player for the Clemson Tigers. Dingle's the one that got the hand on the football. And then there's everybody going forward, and it looks like as he fell down to the ground, he hurt his left knee, might have twisted a little bit. Now the penalty on the play was an illegal lineman downfield. And once the ball's thrown over the line of scrimmage in college football, you can't have anybody downfield. That's the fourth penalty today against the Tar Heels for 25 yards. And I would think that at this point, with that kind of scare mark, I can't imagine Carolina's going to force this issue anymore here. I think they're real happy to go into... Uh, into the locker room at halftime with a 10-0 lead. Dingle played very well last year in this game, put a lot of pressure on Mike Thomas, the quarterback who threw five interceptions last year against Clemson. We talked about Clemson's problems earlier, John. We saw the scores come across our board just a moment ago. The Miami Hurricanes winning easily so far in their battle. There's a program that came under a lot of scrutiny during the offseason. They had some problems as well, and head coach Butch Davis there trying to bring things under control. First down, 15 to go. The ball at the 18-yard line. Johnson looking for a hole, brought down at the 20. John, any significant surprises so far? I'm impressed again by the offensive line. I thought that the uh, offensive line for Clemson and Priester with the skilled people, I thought they'd be able to execute their offense a little more effectively than they have so far in this football game. You've got to be impressed with Chris Keldor. Not too many bad decisions. He's been a little lucky. You know, if uh, Abdullah were able to pick off three of those passes, he might be a different quarterback right now, but sometimes you need the breaks to go with you. This will be the last play of the first half. And interesting also, John, that we haven't seen Oscar Davenport in the ball game yet. They said that he would get some playing time. Tommy West crew trailing 10 to nothing. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders with a Valvoline halftime 96. It's 10 to nothing. College football on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Plymouth. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. And McDonald's. Have you had your break today? Stay tuned for Valvoline Halftime 96. Valvoline Halftime 96. Brought to you by Valvoline. The number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. 
And welcome everyone, Todd Blackledge joins us this year out from the road to be my partner for the rest of this season. Let's talk about that North Carolina-Clemson game, the game you are watching right now. Clemson can't get that running game going and that hurts. Yeah, and John Spagnola hit it right on the head. I mean, everything that Clemson does offensively is predicated off of their ability to run the football. If they can't run the football, it doesn't set up any of their play-action passing game. Neilon Green has to have a good second half. All right, let's get right to the scores and highlights right now. We begin with the Colorado Buffaloes, a team that has Coy Detmer back at quarterback. And what a difference this will make for this team. He ran one in, also passes for one today. Yeah, he looks really good. He looks sharp. His knee looks good. And it seemed like when the rest of the team saw that he was healthy, they all picked it up a notch. To Chris Anderson on that touchdown, he made it 24-0. Michael Black has a one-yard touchdown run as Washington State is now on the board. 24-6 is the score in this one. Detmer's thrown for a couple of touchdowns. Miami against Memphis. The Hurricanes could not get it going in the first half, had only three points, but Magic Benton returns this punt. 67 yards as he busts this one loose, takes it all the way for the touchdown to get Miami going 17 to nothing. Special teams a big difference for Miami today. Yeah, credit Butch Davis. He's struggling a little bit on offense and defense, gets the big plays out of his kicking game. Ryan Clement then goes 73 yards to Magic Benton. Now Benton is in for Yateel Green. Yateel Green suspended for this game. We're going to talk about more about that in just a moment. That made it 27 to 7 right now. It's a final 30 to 7. Miami comes off with the victory. Benton 73 yard touchdown reception and a 67 yard punt return for a touchdown. The reason Benton was in the game for Yateel Green, one of the suspensions today for the Miami Hurricane program. Here's how it looks, not just for Miami. Danielle Ferguson and Util Green suspended for the game by the university. Apparently Ferguson and Green used a limo paid for by a sports agent throughout indefinitely. Other suspensions for Nebraska, linebacker Terrell Farley indefinitely by the university after his arrest on suspicion of drunk driving. For USC, DeLon Washington must sit out another two games, already missed the Penn State game. The NCAA says he violated and used unethical conduct. That's why he is out. For Clemson, the NCAA has also suspended defensive end Trevor Price for an unspecified rules violation. They continue to pile up and have programs that, unfortunately, were trying to get the focus away from them this year. Yeah, some of these programs really can't afford another black eye, and they spent most of the offseason working major damage control, and now here it is the first week of the season. They always have to suspend players. It drives coaches crazy because these are things you can't control. You don't anticipate them coming into the season. You just want to think about what goes on in the field. Right now, let's continue with the scores and the highlights. Get back to the Big Ten. Michigan has just put a field goal on the board, 10-5. to Illinois did get a safety in the game as well. Scott drives back a 72-yard touchdown run in the game. Bowling Green against Alabama. Gene Stallings, does his team have a shot at the SEC championship this year? Warren Faust is the alternate quarterback. Six yards to Marcel West. 14-0 was the score at halftime. Dennis Riddle also with a one-yard touchdown run as Alabama leading Bowling Green in the fourth quarter right now, 21 to nothing. Texas Tech against Kansas State. It's the Big 12, and they're getting it underway. Spike Dykes. Does he like coming into a new conference? The goal line stance there left it scoreless as Texas Tech held. And then Kansas State quarterback Brian Kavanaugh, one yard on the touchdown run, takes it in. And right now, Kansas State has a lead 7-3. And again, a statement game, the first game out of the Big 12. Yeah, it really is a big game for both of them. Usually, they open up with an easier game, a conference game right out of the blocks. Both teams made it to bowls last year, want to get a leg up on conference play. All right, Purdue against Michigan State. And the Wolverine, or rather the Spartans, just come out and blow away Purdue. Jim Coletto, if you're looking at this one, here's a game you figure you have a chance to win and you get clobbered. Yeah, you got to figure coming in, you're on the same level as Michigan State. They're not on the same level as Ohio State or Michigan or maybe even Northwestern. This is a game you think you got a chance to win. Wrong results for Purdue. Yeah, Michael Irvin's cousin, Cedric Irvin, 132 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns. That's a record for the Spartans. Meanwhile, let's continue. Southern Miss against Georgia. This one in the second quarter. Southern Miss has the lead of 3-0. San Jose State against Air Force. Andre Johnson has touchdown runs of 71 yards and 13 yards. Bo Morgan has a one-yard touchdown run. And Tom Brown, the backup quarterback, a 34-yard touchdown run. That one in the San Jose State Air Force game. Idaho against Wyoming. Ryan Fien, the UCLA transfer, 19-yard touchdown pass and a 10-yard touchdown pass. It's a 21-13 game there. And Tennessee Chattanooga against Colorado State. Moses Marino of Colorado State, 80-yard touchdown pass to Jeremy Calhoun. First play from a scrimmage. 
One other game we want to update right now. Kansas State has just gone on top 14 to 3 now as Kavanaugh has another touchdown pass that's one of 17 yards. Kansas State leading Texas Tech 14 to 3. Stick around. When we come back, we'll take a trip to the ledge and we'll try not to jump. Todd Blackcliffe will take a look at the top five teams in the country and why he thinks one of them might have a chance to go on and win the national championship. That and more when we return. Welcome back, everyone, to Keenan Stadium, where North Carolina is trying to snap Clemson's six-game road winning streak. I'm Mark Jones in the house, along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins down on the sidelines. John, Tommy West, the head coach for Clemson, telling me before the game he took his team to see the movie The Fan last night. He gave the movie a thumbs down. He's probably giving his team the thumbs down, too, right now. He is, and uh, one thing that they have been able to do in years past is win effectively on the road. They're coming into this game with six straight wins on the road. And they haven't turned the ball over on the road. And they did it today, and that hurt them in this ballgame. Tommy West should have taken his team to see the movie The Natural. That's right. There's the <laughs> blitz up front that they get caught in. 42, Wilson gets picked off by Gethers. And Johnson is on his way to 67 of the 96 yards he picked up in the first half. And those are the two plays that Tommy West talked about. This play here, he gets caught in the blitz. And the fumbled punt by McLeon. Now look at the first half numbers. The ones that jump out at you off the stat sheet the rushing yardage or lack thereof from the Clemson side of the ledger just 39 yards compared to North Carolina's 111 in the first half something no doubt that falls on the shoulders of that Clemson offensive line and our main their main horse Raymond Priester is only 11 for 32 in this game so that's uh, not something that they're used to Johnson fields the kickoff and takes a knee in the end zone. Now look at our offensive leaders now for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Their quarterback, Chris Keldorf, has done an outstanding job so far. 9 of 14 for a total of 72 yards. No touchdown passes. Had that one pick in the first quarter, but he's been, if not spectacular, efficient for North Carolina. He's been pretty steady so far, but he has been lucky. A couple of balls have been batted around and not quite picked off. We saw Raheem Abdullah get the one interception, but he could have possibly had two more for three altogether, and I think that would change the way Keldorf looks at this game, but Mac Brown told us going into halftime, hey, you know what, we, they, we didn't get the ball turned over, so it's no matter. He said these games are often lost, not won. Johnson trying to win it for North Carolina, bouncing his way out to the 25-yard line where he's brought down by Andre Carter, the strong safety for Clemson. You know, that is a good point, Mark. He told his team, take three days off last weekend and go watch the football games and watch how opening day games are turned out. And he said, more often than not, they're lost, not won. That's exactly right. And that's what we saw in that BYU-Texas A&M shootout out there at Provo. Yeah, second down and five now. Backs out of the eye. It's Johnson again. Rerun. This time, not quite the same, just gaining two yards. Tackled by number 97, Raymond White, the six foot three inch, 265 pound junior from Clinton, Mississippi. Played defensive end a year ago and played nose guard as a sophomore. He's moved back into the middle this year. He actually makes a lot of plays for a, a nose guard. Last year he had one tackle every 9.4 plays, which was the highest average in the defensive line. So he is an active middle guard. Just underway here in the second half. Johnson now rushing for over 100 yards. He has 103. Backs out of the offset eye. Keldorf will pass. And will pass complete to the tight end. A man named Jones. Freddie Jones. First down and 10 for North Carolina. Carter making the tackle. But too far downfield. They move the six. Jones is on a couple of... Um, Three seasons of uh, scribers and holsters and everything else. It's a second team All-American coming into the year. He did not play well against Clemson last year. He's having a fine game so far today. Picked up 10 yards on that pass reception. Johnson on the toss. Johnson brought down at the 37 right at the line of scrimmage. Clemson's defense led by Andy Ford that time, stringing the play out nicely. Ford, number 43, who is seen from, right there from Sumter, South Carolina. Now, does he have the knee or the hamstring? If we knew which one of the twins, well, we know it's Peter Ford, but that's Andy Ford. To look at them, you wouldn't know. 
I think he has the knee. I think that's how they tell him apart. They tell him to get different injuries, and then they can tell by how they're limping who's who. The coaches didn't know for sure either. Keldorf underneath on the quick slant to Chris Watson, the fullback out of the backfield. Now you see two successive completions by Keldorf. One is to the tight end over the middle, a nice safe throw to convert the third down. Now you've got a real safe pass to Watson, who despite his size, he's 5'10", 247, has very soft hands and catches the ball well out of the backfield. Made a great catch in last year's game against Clemson in the end zone that was called back as the result of a penalty. Right now, third down and six to go for the Tar Heels on their opening drive of the second half. Keldor. Incomplete, just as we sing the praises of Watson. He has one go into and out of his arms. Incomplete. And North Carolina sends in the punting team. We've seen a lot of the short passing game from North Carolina so far. The term West Coast offense is really overused, isn't it, John? Something Coach Brown pointed out to us. It is. It's a short passing game. Let the receivers run with the football. And this is the kind of offense they installed here, not only to be more efficient offensively, but to attract the kind of players they want to attract in North Carolina. Derek DePriest with the punt. Leon started at his nine. Brings it out to the 27-yard line. The Clemson Tigers trying to keep their six-game road winning streak alive. Trailing 10-0 when we return. A panoramic view of Keenan Stadium here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And somewhere off to the left is the Deeney Smith Center. They talk a lot about basketball here, but they're beginning to talk more and more about football. Under construction, a brand new football center. Right here on the grounds at Keenan Stadium. Clemson first down and 10. Priester met right at the line of scrimmage, falling forward to the 27. A tackle made by Greg Ellis on the play. North Carolina making a move, trying to make a move into the upper echelon, the real elite echelon of college football programs. Something of a concerted effort by Matt Brown and his coaching staff. And that's the top 10. And you know, you can get the top 25 here and there, but cracking that top 10 is a difficult task. And Matt Brown is bent on doing that with this team. And that's why he wants to recruit better quarterbacks and receivers. And he feels this West Coast offense is going to help him. And the new facilities should help as well. Green on the play fake, looking downfield. A broken pattern, incomplete. He tried to hit Kenya Crooks, who took the inside route, and the quarterback, Green, threw it outside. Dre Bly on the corner with the coverage. A look at the quarterback comparison. Green just 4 of 11. John, any significance behind those numbers? Well, not yet. I mean, you know, he could still open up here in the second half, but I, Green's been under a lot of pressure. That last play, Greg Ellis put a lot of pressure on him, and that caused him to throw the ball where he did. Green out of the shotgun this time. Throws high and incomplete for Tony Horn. And it's fourth down. A great sequence for the Tar Heel defense. And this crowd comes alive. Kevin Laird into punt as we look out the near sellout crowd. 47,500 here at Keenan Stadium. Bly calling the fair catch at the 36-yard line. Go, Auspicious field now. position for the Tar Heels. A 38-yard punt. Let's go, yard punt. The winner of the ACC Conference goes to the Alliance Bowl. Number two goes to the Gator. Number three, the Peach. Four, Carquest. And five, the Sun Bowl. This is becoming a very, very, very good football conference for more Dean Blevins. Yeah, that's a uh, picture there that the athletic director, John Swafford, hopes his Tar Heels can go to again. John, your uh, new facility, $38 million. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break for this play and come back and talk about it. All right. The slant pattern incomplete intended 
for Jason Beeson. There's a flag on the play. We may have interference on the play. Dexter McLeon providing the coverage for the Tigers. Yeah, that'll be against McLeon. For Pass interference. On the defense. We put the ball in play at the spot of the foul. First down. Let's go back to Dean. John, that uh, project is a big one. You have 30 million of 38 raised. We, we, we have uh, raised $30 million, Dean, for the project and uh, have had tremendous response from our supporters. To, uh, and it'll mean, it's something that'll mean a great deal to our football program and our entire athletic program. Describe the facility briefly, if you could. In, in fact, let's take a break one more time. I apologize okay. for this, but I want the people to understand what this facility is. And it'll mean a lot to the university. Goes to the ball on the 43, first and 10 for North Carolina. Leon Johnson swarmed and brought down at the 43. Dean? Right, John, tell us about the facility. Dean, we're adding 8,000 seats to take our capacity up to 60,000, building an entirely new football center that'll house our dressing rooms, training facilities, weight rooms, coaches' offices, and we'll be moving out of the existing field house, which was built in 1927. Uh, so it's a, it's a major project that, that we think will have very positive ramifications. Congratulations. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Dean. Back to you guys. All right. Uh, Dean pointing out that that uh, facility was built in 1927. He said it was here when he came for his visit. Does that mean Dean was born in 1927? I'm not sure. The pass complete down to the 42-yard line. Johnson out of the backfield showing you, John Spagnola, his versatility this time as a receiver. Oh, uh, yeah, Leon Johnson wanted to work one-on-one -on -one with the linebackers today. That's a, that's a mismatch. If you can isolate him one-on-one, -on -one, Leon Johnson has the ability to shake loose and make the catch. If he's working one-on-one -on -one there, you can see he's got his linebacker in tow. And that was a guy who just could not keep up with Leon Johnson. Leon Johnson got that fresh haircut two days ago courtesy of one of the many team barbers here in North Carolina. He's aerodynamically correct and looking to throw on the option has a man. And he overthrew his intended receiver who was wide open at the nine yard line. Number one, Chucky Parquet. A former quarterback, Chucky Parquet gets into the game for a big play and he was wide open. Leon Johnson did a great job of hiding that football and all of a sudden, he throws it downfield. He says, oh, man. Oh, man. How could I miss that? Look, he lost the S on his Johnson. <laughs> Superman losing the S off his chest, too. It's on his chest. <laughs> Second down in 10. So he's becoming a little bit unraveled here today. Well, he is human. Johnson. This is Watson now, out to the 39-yard line. Some big games coming up in the ACC, including this one. Some games of note to look at on your calendar. Later this month, Florida State, North Carolina, and a game you can see on ESPN on October the 5th. Clemson goes down to Tallahassee to take on Bobby Bowden. And the Seminoles, who once again have a very strong crew. And you know, you see Clemson, Florida State, UNC, and Virginia, and those are the four teams. Everybody's expecting the challenge here in the ACC this year, and you got two of them right in front of you now. Third and seven. The pass. Complete. Down to incomplete now. He had it for a minute and dropped it. Stevens, who's had a stellar afternoon so far, couldn't put the squeeze on the ball. L.C. Stevens working down the left sideline, one-on-one. -on -one. Andy Ford is there in coverage. L.C. Stevens, you can see his speed, his acceleration to the football. And I'll tell you what, Ford does an excellent job of getting that hand in there at the last second. Right there, disrupts his hand, and that ball slips through and gets to the end zone. Great timing by Andy Ford to bat that ball away. Boy, that's when you know you're beaten as a defender, and you just desperately throw that hand in there at the last second, and he was fortunate enough to be able to bat the ball away. Yeah, touchdown saving lunge by Ford. This is DePriest into punt. Hangs it up. The Tar Heels can't get there in time on special teams to down it. So it'll come back out to the 20-yard line.
College football and ABC Sports brought to you by the all-new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. And the United States Postal Service. On a warm and breezy Saturday afternoon in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A look at the offensive production, respectively, for Clemson and North Carolina. And the two questions you wonder is, Tar Heel defense this good, or is the Clemson offense that anemic so far in this game today? Probably at this point, John, a combination of both. Neil on grade has yet to get untracked. Clemson fourth in the nation in rushing in 1995 at 260 yards a game, well below that today at just 40. Green wants to get some quick, but Kent intended for Tony Horn. Green came with the quickness on the drop, but overthrew Horn. Robert Williams on the coverage. John, you've mentioned it time after time. We don't want to belabor the point, but the Tar Heel corners, Williams and Dre Bly, have done a great job. Especially in that bump and run coverage. Eight and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Ten to nothing, Clemson trailing. Second and ten. And Green finds his intended receiver at the 27-yard line, about three yards short of the first down, is Kenya Brooks. You know, one of the rules that they've changed in the NCAA this year is to protect the long snapper. This is Chris Allnut, the long snapper. Nobody's allowed to hit him for one second while you can see how vulnerable he is with his head down there. And I think that's one of the better rules they've come on. This has been in high school for an awfully long time, and they finally got around to doing it here in college, and I bet you'll see the pros change that rule as, as well. You like the rule, huh? Oh, absolutely. I was a long snapper in high school. That's why I like the rule. How's your neck? <laughs> Third Thanks down. very much. Third down and three for Clemson. Play fake. Green, a wide open horn, has the first down at the 32-yard line. So Neil on Green finds his target for the first down. They really needed that one. Jomo Leggins made the stop from a strong safety spot for North Carolina. Stops the clock with 8.07 to play in the third quarter. Green looked extremely authoritative on that throw as well, a good sign. Yes, it is. You know he's taken a lot of heat last year, he said that he didn't play well in the big games, and I thought his coaching staff made a good remark, and that was, well, the big games were the games we lost. <laughs> he played real well in other games, Georgia Tech uh, and North Carolina State last year. You know, and he didn't take any heat for that at all. So it depends what the big games are and how you define them. Priester that time on the run, brought down by Keith Neal. A lot of this area of the country, especially North Carolina, had been bracing for Hurricane Edward up until yesterday. But since that time, the hurricane has headed north towards New York. A look at the temperature and the conditions right now, humidity at 55 degrees. 55 percent, check that. <laughs> oh, and it's picked off. Simmons. Comes back for Carolina, bringing it down to the Clemson 21. Ryan Simmons does a great job dropping back in his zone. It's a slant-in pattern that Green is trying to fit right in there Just to his left now Simmons goes to his drop and he takes that ball away excellent job by Simmons so far the battle of Simmons being won by the guy in blue we'll be right back turnovers becoming a bigger story of the game right now Clemson committing two to North Carolina's one and here's the last one and both occurring on their part of the football field. Here's Brian Simmons. He's going to drop and read the quarterback's eyes. Kenya Crook is coming on the slant him. Watch him drop and just take it away. Brian Simmons with an excellent job reading the quarterback and getting in position. That thing hit him right in the chest. And both of those turnovers have turned over very deep into Clemson territory. The one fumbled punt return and that interception right there. All right, Keldor. Boy, North Carolina with room service field position. This is the tailback, number 35, Maurice McGregor. But back to that interception. Dean Blevins, you think passing lanes 
figured into the equation? Oh, I don't think there's any question, Mark. I think that's one thing that uh, is easy to overlook sometimes. You've got a quarterback in Nelon Green who's 5'10 or 5'11 going up against a rangy defensive front seven. The shortest guy is 6'4. Big wing spins up, sp spans on these guys. Trust me, I was a six-footer trying to throw. I couldn't see. He's 5'10. Short guys have trouble seeing the options and delivering the football. Need some platform cleats out there. <laughs> Well, you know, not only that on the interception, you know, he's not rolling out. He's dropping back, and he's trying to throw in the middle of the field. So that is the most congested part, Dean, that you can throw the football to as a quarterback. Well, you know, they've got him a lot of boots and rolls and things to get him outside, but you're exactly right. That's where he has problems when he drops straight back in the pocket. And I think Moody's done a good job of getting him outside, but you sometimes you simply have to drop back. All right. On that last run, McGregor tackled by Simmons. It's third down, three to go. The nose of the ball just inside the Clemson 15-yard line. 6.08 to play in the third quarter. McGregor and Linton split behind the quarterback, Chris Keldor. He's going to pass. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Stevens. You know what? He didn't beat anybody there. He just went up and got it. That's one of those plays where you say, you know what? I think you're a better athlete, and I'm going to let you go get the football. A 14-yard touchdown grab. Watch this. Peter Ford on coverage, and he's in position. He's not beat. Look at him. There's 29. He's all set to go. Uh-uh. He just got a better athlete going up and getting the football and keeping that one foot in bounds. L.C. Stevens took the elevator to the top floor, John. Absolutely. Josh McGee in for the extra point. And the North Carolina Tar Heels doing a job in front of the home crew. You think the quarterback was happy about this? Chris Keldor throwing his first touchdown pass at the Division I level. It's always nice to pick up the headset after you throw one of those. Well, they always run over there these days, <laughs> don't they? They run over and get congratulations. I never see them run over after they throw an interception. But give Keldor credit and the Carolina offense for getting 10 points now off of turnovers. Stevens uh, put the brakes on <laughs> and burned some rubber on the DB board. Peter Ford cannot be faulted. That's a situation where he's just outmanned by a better athlete. And they're looking for big things here from L.C. Stevens as he steps up in a big game here. It all started with an 87-yard touchdown reception in the Clark West Bowl. They realized they had something special. And he shows how special he is here today. Yeah, the L.C. and L.C. Stevens could stand for left confused if you're talking about the D.B. Peter Ford, our work on the left corner. Yep. It's been all Carolina blue so far. They're pitching a shutout. 17 to nothing with just under six minutes to play in the third quarter. That last scoring drive coming off a turnover. They moved the ball 21 yards in three plays. Ford and Woods back for Clemson. is Joe Woods brought down at the 22-yard line on the play by number 48, Sean Woodard. And what is going through the mind right now of the offensive coordinator, Coach Moody for the Clemson Tigers. Daryl Moody left North Carolina a year ago. This is his first year with Clemson. He left the same job at North Carolina to take over at Clemson. And he's the one rubbing his head, John. Yeah, he's trying to come up, dial right play right now. You know, he did say one thing interesting. He said, I know that personnel over there. I got to be careful. I don't give them too much credit on defense. Let's see if he goes after some of the better players here for the Tar Heels. Well, it's time to get busy. They trail 17-0. Rain rolls out, completes the pass. But Tony Horn is probably wishing he may have dropped it. 
And you can feel as is always that important during the course of a football game, a momentum changer or momentum that continues to build. And right now the Tar Heels have it off that interception and the touchdown pass. Up until that last interception, Green, Elon Green, the quarterback, number 15, hadn't thrown an interception in 139 consecutive passes coming into this game. And you know, he never saw Brian Simmons at all. He was locked into his receiver and he never saw Simmons in this drive. And another big hit. Oh yeah, it's Dre Ding. Dre Bly hit Joe Woods real hard. And, and Mac he, doesn't like it either. He wants discipline out of his players. He's letting them know, you jumped up, you, you celebrated, and I'm on the rules committee, and I'll tell you what, they're going to flag you for that. Let's have a listen to that last hit by Dre Bly. <laughs> you know, John, you understand how the coach feels about over-exuberance, but it's so tough oh, yeah. to take that natural emotion out when you make a great play. Oh, and your adrenaline surges. When something like that happens, you feel like you are king of the world. If only for a moment. A yeah. timeout called on the play by the Clemson Tigers. Especially when you're a quarterback, because someday you're going to get toasted. <laughs> but Dre Bly, Robert Williams, the corners for this team today, the Tar Heels, you know, they were asked to play man-to-man -man coverage, and everybody said, what are you doing man-to-man? -man? You should put these kids in the zone. They are playing really tough defense today. John, you got to love being on campus doing these games, don't you? Next Saturday, more college football, a double dip on ABC. Regional action, noon Eastern, most of you will see Georgia Tech taking on North Carolina State or Michigan State against Nebraska. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Duke tries to tackle third-ranked Florida State or other regional action, including Louisville at Penn State. That's where John and Dean and I will be. Don't forget to call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday, beginning at 12 noon Eastern time on ABC. Another look at Trey Bly. You know, you got to give the defense credit here today. They've taken away the option. They've taken away the inside running. They've taken away the perimeter passing for Neil on green. So far today, the Tar Heel defense has had every answer they could. And you got to wonder, you know, Moody and Torbush, the defensive coordinator, worked here. Right now, Torbush is winning that battle of wits against his former associate. Could be worth a dinner tap somewhere down the line. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Third and two for the Tigers on the option. Priester. It's going to be close, and I'm telling you, the North Carolina Tar Heels are bringing the wood. They are. They are getting after it, aren't they? Omar Brown came up from a safety position to put the sombrero on Priester. You have got to have your chin strap on tightly today. Hey, you know what's interesting there, Mark, excuse me, is that, you know, one corner makes a hit, Dre Bly hits it. You know, Omar Brown says, hey, wait a second, I could do that. And then you're going to get John Mo Liggins in there saying, wait a second, where do you see this hit? These guys are going to turn up the intensity on defense. And the beat goes on. And they didn't get the first down on that play. So the hit not only was effective for audio effects, it, uh, it stops the punch and drive. An outstanding series by the North Carolina Tar Heel defense. Priester limited to just 34 yards rushing so far. On fourth down and short. Laird punting. And here's Bly at the 30. Oh, he has a wall. Dre Bly has a wall. And it's still Dre's day. Back to the 46-yard line. Hey, coach, he's saying, I'm sorry I hot-dogged it on the last one. But watch me now, brought down by Tony Dessou. A return of 24 yards on the punt. All Trey had to do was get to that wall. He gave up a little bit of ground, but then the wall is set and he's able to tightrope down the sideline and cut back inside. He's an exciting young player and they are very, very encouraged about the promise he shows for this Tar Heel football team. There's the wall right down the picket fence, takes it back inside. And Dre, as you said, has really, really come to play here today. And out of the penthouse suite of the dogs of the doghouse. <laughs> Keldorf has time. Going back to the same guy, Stevens. He took it to the house. Touchdown, Tar Heel. Brotherly love. 
L.C. Stevens goes after one Ford on the last touchdown, and this time his brother Andy gets picked on. And once again, it's a superior athlete matched one-on-one. -on -one. In for the extra point, Josh McGee. Out of the hold of Derek DePriest. North Carolina leading 24 love. Stevens matched one on one with Andy Ford. Now Ford has good position, but he trips as he's trying to get an angle to the football. You see how he just clips the heels of LC Stevens. He falls to the ground. Stevens, as a receiver, senses that, slows down, and makes the nice move reception. And LC Stevens <laughs> likes. Have you driven a Ford lately? LC has. <laughs> oh, he's driven two Fords right into the ground for touchdowns. You know, it's funny, one of the question marks coming into the game was the inexperience of the receivers. Uh, Davis Bourne had caught 50 more passes than all the other receivers for North Carolina combined. But L.C. Stevens steps up and shows that he's a big-time receiver here for the Tar Heels. That's got to make Coach Mack Brown feel that much better about the fact that maybe now, John, he can give Octavius Brown a little more time right. to recuperate from that knee injury that he suffered back in January because he's still not 100%. Coach Mack Brown telling us that Octavius Brown probably won't be back to full strength until about three weeks from now, and they do have a week off in between. Well, he didn't have surgery until the second week of uh, January. So, I mean, that, the psychology of that injury is hard enough to come over, but he hasn't had a lot of time to recuperate either. Ford and Woods back deep. That's Woods, who takes it five yards deep and takes a knee. Smith on the kickoff. Jacked up, as is his entire team. And when kickers get jacked off, they make noises like, wee, wee, <laughs> <yippee>. <laughs> Let's go downstairs to Dean. Well, there's more of that woo going on right here as well, because I'm looking at a team down here that's reacting like, hey, we really are good. I think they felt they were good coming into the season, but they look up now 24 to nothing. And Mac Brown's dream, guys, was for these inexperienced stars, he felt, to emerge, the quarterback, the younger guys. They are emerging in a big-time way, and as you've talked about, Mack wants him a pro quarterback and to be able to throw it. They're getting it done. And look at those numbers. Thanks a lot, Dean. 288 total yards to 83 for Clemson. Green under heavy pressure. Running like a fugitive right now. Green run out of bounds at the 18-yard line by James Hamilton. And, you know, this is an untenable situation for the Clemson offense. This is not the way they can win football games. Obviously, they're behind in this game, but they rely on running the football, play action, passing to make big plays. Now, Carolina's going to turn those people up front against them, and the secondary knows to play for pass. It's not the kind of situation that Neilon Green and his offense can operate under efficiently. You had mentioned the 88 yards for Clemson. Johnson alone has 132 yards today. 3.52 to play in the third quarter. Thorne. All wound up and nowhere to go. Tony Horn brought down, ran about 60 yards, and I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Mike Pringley, number 91, making the tackle. No gain on the play. You know, it gives you a sense of that North Carolina team speed, though, doesn't it? They try to run that play, Hort comes around, and everybody is hustling to the football. All these guys up front can run 4-7 to 4-9 speed. Yeah, okay, nothing happening here. And you got to give Horn a lot of credit for just getting back near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there was no gain on the play. Third down, 12 to go. Four wideouts for the Tigers. Green. Is it a fumble? Yes, it Still is. Still alive. And the Tar Heels have the pill. 
They think so. And so do the officials. Another Clemson turnover. Greg Ellis on the recovery, number 87. I didn't see you got in there. Number 70, Andre Purvis, put the pressure on the quarterback. Andre Purvis, number 70. Neil on looking to his right. Does the ball come out? No, it does not. It slips out of his hand first. Purvis with the great play and Ellis with the speed to be able to get on the football. We said Ellis has a 37-inch vertical jump. He plays JV basketball for Dean Smith. So you got some athletes up here <laughs> getting after it, and I would not want to be Neil on Green right now. Man, 37 inches only gets you JV in North Carolina. <laughs> Quarterbacking this team is a guy who attended Coach Smith's basketball camp. But right now, it's all football, and that's what he's doing with this crew. Leon Johnson, another outstanding athlete, running into the middle of the field, brought down at the three-yard line by Simmons and Pope. One has to wonder as this game unfolds, and certainly it's heavily in North Carolina's favor, is how much the off-field distractions, how much this off-season turbulence has affected Clemson as they prepare for the football team. Yeah, the, Dean Blevins said they were embarrassed, but you gotta wonder, you can't have that many distractions either and focus and be able to play football. Yeah, good point. Second down, goal to go. How natural is this run? Very natural. Touchdown, Leon Johnson. football team. The S is back on his chest. I think the S stands for six. <laughs> Leon Johnson, John, 109 yards total rushing. Watch the execution. The tight end gets his block. Watch the fullback, 27 lift. He cuts down the defender, Edwards. Everybody on a body there. Hey, Leon, just pick your way to the end zone. I have a feeling that that guy, Leon Johnson, who is missing an S on his jersey, by the way. <laughs> he is missing an S on his jersey. McGee with the extra point. John, I have a strong feeling that Leon Johnson won't be selling cars or working at a car dealership for his next job. No. It could come Sunday afternoons. Or Monday nights. Yes. Yeah, Tommy West, no question, but bottled now. And uh, not a situation I'd like to be in as a head coach. Does John Saunders have the S on his back or his chest? John, back to you. No, I've actually got a BK on my chest because it's time for the Burger King play of the day. And we go to the Michigan-Illinois game. Scott drives back, nowhere to pass this ball, so he takes off, gets through the secondary, and no one left to catch him. Takes it 72 yards for the touchdown. Michigan right now holding on to the lead. Scott drives back with the Burger King play of the day. Mark. All right. Back here, 31-0. North Carolina leading Clemson. Clemson had come into this game, I want to remind you, on a six-game road winning streak. Right now, that streak very much in danger. As we look at the crowd, keep in mind that the capacity of this stadium is only 47,500 this year. That's because of the expansion project happening in the end zone. That new facility will be completed a year from now. Brian Schmitz kicking off. Joe Woods. Woods getting to the outside. A flag down back of the 22. Woods back on his feet. And Joe Woods has thoughts of taking it to the house. Oh. Woods brought down at the three-yard line. But will it all be for naught? That's the question that begs. Because back oh. of the 22, there's a flag down. And Joe Woods doesn't want to hear or see any of that. After that brilliant, sparkling 87-yard bull. When things don't go your way, they just don't go your way. That flag came out awfully late. He was already 30 yards away when that flag came out. Holding on the return, 10 yards, bottle of foul, first down. Is this the hold right here? I think that's 
Got one right there that looks very suspicious. There may have been a couple of perpetrators on that play. We're trying to find the hold, and the only thing I could see is what they called earlier, what we circled earlier on number 32, Kelton Dunnigan. <laughs> right there's the grab. Yep, hold it right there. We saw the grab on the jersey, and that's what the official called. And that looked like Kelton Dunnigan pulling down on that jersey a little bit. The official sees that jersey get pulled. He sees the defender's shoulders get turned, and that flag came out. Handed off to the fullback on first and 10. The ball coming back to the 12-yard line. The big story today, Leon Johnson for North Carolina. Sure, you throw a pass, you have 109 yards rushing. Wait, the only thing wrong with you today, let me take care of you. <laughs> Get that thing on there for you. There you go. All right, now you're all set. Get the S back on there. Hey, that penmanship's a little uh, shaky there, uh, partner. <laughs> I guess at Yale, uh, that wasn't a major, was it? No, it was not. <laughs> Second down and five to go for the Tigers. Back side of the eye, they give it to the fullback, Emery Smith, who last year had 15 touchdowns shut out today. As has been the story for much of the Clemson offense, they have been shut out. In the last two games, Ooh. they've really been pummeled going back to their bowl game. That was the Syracuse loss, 41-0 to Syracuse in the Gator Bowl. And speaking of Syracuse, on the other side of the field, the North Carolina Tar Heels travel up there next week to take on the Origin, and they will be ripe with confidence should they hold on today. This is Priestman trying the right side, finding no room. It'll be fourth down and about two to go. John, do you go for it at this point with 18 seconds to go in the quarter? I think not. I think you're just asking for more points against you. But it'll be interesting next week when you talk about that Syracuse game. That secondary is going to be tested by Donovan McNabb, the fine quarterback up there in Syracuse. So the test will continue here for the Tar Heels. And that was the last play of the third quarter. And appropriately, the sun has come out here on Tobacco Road. We'll return with more action between Clemson and North Carolina after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Names in the history of professional football share their memories with us in a one-hour primetime special. Join us for ABC's Monday Night Football Mania and the Chicago Bears for Troy Aikman and the World Champs, Dallas Cowboys. On the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, check your local listings for the Action Monday right here on ABC Sports. I'm Mark Jones in the house along with John Spagnola and Dean Blevins working the sidelines. Kevin Laird punting as North Carolina leads Clemson 31-0. This is Dre Bly, who's been a big story in the secondary and returning punts and kicks for the Tar Heels this afternoon. The freshman, who's just 5'10", 190, has been proficient all afternoon. Flag down at the 40-yard line. Here's the call. Block in the back, on the return, 10 yards. First down. Let's take a look at the numbers up to this point in the game. Well, Clemson's not even to the century mark in total yards. And I'll tell you what, 17 points right here off of turnovers today. That's the difference in this football game so far. You know, in the third quarter, Clemson only had 17 total yards. So they were totally dominated in the third quarter, which is where the Tar Heels took total control of this football game. You know, I attribute some of North Carolina's success today. I think you'd have to agree to some point on the fact that they've come out here. They've been relaxed. They've been loose. And I think that's a direct product of the way that the head coach, Matt Brown, prepares his team. Yeah, I definitely do. And not only that, they got through camp without getting anybody hurt. And, I, and that's a big part nowadays because you have situations in college football where you just don't have the depth that you used to. But both teams came into this uh, football game uh, without any real health problems. Coach Brown electing to forego choosing team captains this year. Instead, 
They have a leadership committee. I'm not going to say that he runs a loose ship because it's not loose, but he does give his players their fair share, share, share of the say. Well, and when they produce these kinds of results, like Maurice McGregor did on that run, it's a good call by the coach. It's definitely not a loose ship. No hats on the players inside. No earrings. No earrings, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't play for this guy. God leave mine at the door if it meant it. <laughs> and uh, and they yes sir and no sir you to death when you meet these kids on the field. So it's it's very impressive. On the cusp of moving into the real elite class of college football programs, the top ten. And look at this run by McGregor running with bad intentions. He's a power runner. He's the guy, you know, they told him when they coached him up, they said, look, Maurice, one move and then start running and running over people. There's a little dip, and now he said, okay, that's the one move my coach will let me have. Now I gotta start running over people. Michael Allen, the strong safety, looking at a freight train coming his way. Gregor getting the first down, first and 10. Just underway here in the fourth quarter on a day that has been all North Carolina so far. Keldorf has been the starting quarterback from the opening snap. Gives it to McGregor. Gains about three yards. Keldorf so far, 14 of 21. Total of 159 yards, two touchdown passes, and one interception. And he showed a lot of resilience, John, in bouncing back from that early interception he threw. He did, and he should have been rattled, uh, deservedly so, in the end of the first half. He almost threw a pick. He did throw one earlier in the game. But I'll tell you what, when you got a guy like L.C. Stevens going high in the end zone and taking the ball away or streaking down the sideline, it makes you a lot better quarterback. Keldorf brought down at the 47-yard line. The other half of that star combination, Leon Johnson, on the sidelines taking a well-deserved rest right now and probably uh, fixing up his fade, his haircut. He talked about the North Carolina barber shop yesterday. Well, I'm not gonna say who's the best. Uh, they all do a good job. Uh, depends on who's available to give you a haircut. Uh, uh, they open up shop every uh, Thursday and they just cut our hair and it's a uh, time that we get together and we just talk about what we're gonna do on Saturday and we just all get pumped up and it's just a way for our team to get together. It really does promote team unity. Hey, I, I'd get one myself if I could. I'm told that Darren Ashford, a.k.a. Breeze, the receiver, is the best barber on the squad. Keldorf throws it to the man with the fresh haircut. <laughs> and he's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Where can I get one of those, John? <laughs> Leon Johnson on the reception, right out of bounds, finally, by Wayne Moore. Well, we were told Leon Johnson was going to touch the football a great deal today. And that's just a simple play with the available time, the extra time that the quarterback has. Look, he's looking downfield. Nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Where's my Mr. Natural, my reliable guy? And there he was, Leon Johnson, blocking and then leaking out into the secondary, making a big play. And somewhere his grandmother is watching this game and wincing, watching the television cautiously, hoping that Leon doesn't get hit too hard. This time, Maurice McGregor brought down at the 28-yard line. Johnson has a lot of fans, including his grandmother. Now look at his numbers, 160 all-purpose yards this afternoon. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, it's a real character test right now for Clemson. Uh, Spags mentioned a minute ago, 41 to nothing in the bowl. Now you have, what, 31? You got 72 to nothing. These guys had the, the problems... Uh, out of the season. I see several of them right now losing composure, shouting at fans, some of their own fans, and it's a real test for them. It's going to tell a lot about the rest of their season, how they emerge from this one down to the 20-yard line. Let's go back to New York and John Saunders. Mark, the Gators are at work early against Southwest Louisiana. Fourth and one here on their opening drive. Perry Jackson just slips across for the touchdown. 7-0, the Florida Gators out in front as they try and march towards another championship game. Back to you. All right, you know, offense never a question with the Gators. Defense, mostly the question there. Spurrier has a new defensive coordinator this year. Back here, McGregor pounding ahead, forging down to the 17-yard line. 
It's tough in the emotions of college football at any level. You come up, you have the expectations for the season, and these guys were in this football game through the first half. They turned the football over, and this is where you're going to really sense what kind of resolve these young men have, the kind of leadership Tommy, Tommy West has got to impart on them to be able to rally from this defeat. The operative words you just mentioned, young men, people at home, and all of us sometimes fail to realize these are 19, 18-year-olds sometimes. Keldorf into the end zone. Flag looks like, could be, might be interference. I don't know. You might have to look at the catchable ball ruling here on interference because Greg Harris coming down the middle. There's no question he was knocked over and root to the ball, but that ball was so, that was thrown so high in the air. I don't know if he had a chance of catching it. First down. First down for North Carolina. Well, tomorrow, don't miss the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Miller Lite. Jesper Parnovic at minus 19 leads Nolan Hinkie by one stroke in that event. Tiger Woods, Woods is at way back at minus four. Woods making his professional debut, of course. Much publicized. First and goal for the Tar Heels. McGregor denied at the three-yard line by a bevy of tacklers led by O.J. Childress, Andre Carter, and Chris Jones. Tigers hoping maybe not to be scored upon one more time. Well, this is where you have to uh, dig deep as a player. I mean, things uh, definitely are not going to work out for them on the scoreboard here today, but they have pride, and they're going to try and do their best to keep Carolina out of the end zone. This is the 10th play of the Carolina drive. Watson, Linton, and McGregor in the backfield. Watson in motion. McGregor gets the carry. Over the top. Touchdown, Carolina. Right at that offensive line, Mark. Mike Baxter, Brian Honeycutt, Jeff Saturday, Jernes Gethers, and Byron Thomas. And with that offensive line playing so well, maybe uh, Moody wants to go back to where he started out. It's just an awesome display here by that offensive line. Tough day for the Clemson offensive coordinator. McGregor, nice run. for the extra point. Out of the hold of the priest. 38-0. The offensive line for North Carolina has done everything but the Macarena today. It's 38 love. We'll be right back. Well, that's Monday. Next Saturday, it's a college football double dip on ABC Sports. Regional action at noon Eastern. Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, or Michigan State against number one Nebraska. Then at 3.30, Duke tries to tackle highly ranked hey, Florida State or other regional action, including Louisville at Penn State, which is where John Dean and I will be. Don't forget to call your cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. Look at the discrepancy, you might call it, in total yardage. <laughs> That's one word I'd use. If I'm Tommy West, I'd probably use some words I can't use on television right now. <laughs> Derek DePriest is kicking off for the Tar Heels. Edwards back deep. Along with Tony Horn. Horn wanted to come out, then took a knee, finally. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Brian Honeycutt, the, uh, the tackle or the guard, is going to pull on this play. He really doesn't have anybody to block. Watch him pull, come to the left, hold it there a second, and you're going to see where the tailback just cuts it right underneath him. Go ahead and roll it, Maurice McGregor. Now, he's got to follow his hip block, and he says, wait a second, I see the whole backside. All good tailbacks do that, and he just takes it up into the end zone. Honeycutt is one of those guys the coaches told us about. He said, i got to be careful the way I talk to him, Greg Davis. He said, he'll jump out a window. He's so excitable, I have to really tone it down to him before a football game. 
Taking it to the fullback, Emery Smith. Let's go back to New York. And John Saunders, who will take us between the hedges. John? Mark, it's Georgia and the Bulldogs against Southern Miss. And happy to have Robert Edwards back. Remember last year, he started like a house on fire and then got injured. Here he takes this one, goes 33 yards for the touchdown to give Georgia the lead, 7-6 in the third quarter. Mark. Hey, John, I guess uh, they don't seem to miss Greg Davis yet. The no. offensive coordinator here this year at North Carolina. Green going up top. And he's picked off, picked off by Greg Williams. The fourth turnover today for Clemson. Greg Williams playing in a backup role here today is a nickelback. And again, you know, he just was able to drive on that football, make some great play, turn it around and locating the football. 38-0. We'll be right back. Well, as you look at number 10 there in the North Carolina huddle, tall, six foot four inch quarterback, Oscar Davenport, think back to a year ago when he injured his left knee in this very game against Clemson. Davenport recovering from that knee injury. And he is just getting back to full speed right now, John. Yeah, he is. It's one of those strange injuries. He just set up in the pocket, threw, and somebody collapsed on his left knee. And he came into the game for Mike Thomas, who was struggling. It's, a, again, an opposite image of what happened uh, last year. Mike Thomas threw the interceptions. This year, it's Elon Green. Good play fake. He really sold a fake and completes the pass to Ebenezer Ekubon. And Ekubon runs for the first down, finally pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line by Antoine Edwards. Ecubon, a load himself at 6'4", 255. Let's see the kind of work the young man has. Hides the ball well, settles for a second, sells the play, and that makes it so much easier. You saw all those defenders flashing. Now here's one of those situations a coach can get in trouble for, and that he's got a new guy in the game, he wants to give him some experience, but you gotta watch running up the score or doing too much with the football offensively here. Yeah, interesting point. 38-0 with nine minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Davenport hands it off this time. And Mike Jeter makes it down to the 37-yard line. But Chris Keldor, the junior college transfer from California, with a great day. 15 completions, 182 yards, two touchdowns for the six foot five inch 250 yes 250 pound quarterback and that's his roommate he's having a good time with jeff saturday they call the signals on that offense they room together and they probably bark out audibles in their sleep together you think that <laughs> it's probably this time davenport hands it off to jeter again he stacks up at the 39 but back to davenport the quarterback who's in the game right now john we watched him in practice on Thursday and Friday. You were very impressed with his mechanics, and we saw an example of that on the play fake a moment ago. Absolutely. He works very, very hard on it. He understands this offense real well. They're real impressed with him. He wasn't able to work out in the spring, but he picked everything up. And he knows the footwork, the foot positioning, all the kind of things that make you a good quarterback. He spends a lot of time on Very impressed with him and his work habits. North Carolina not rusty in their earliest start ever. Clemson an inauspicious beginning in their second earliest beginning ever and another big play down to the eight yard line jonathan linton finally pushed out of bounds at the seven Davenport doing an excellent job executing what he has to do a simple little swing pass to jonathan linton gets a couple blockers out in front of him and man the clemson tigers saying boy can't wait to get out of here this is their earliest start ever. North Carolina making their second earliest start ever. 7.38 to play. Oscar Davenport, the quarterback now, with the offense. Backs out of the eye. The toss to Jeter. Cutting it inside into the end zone. Coming right 
right at you from the end zone. Peter gets the ball out the end. You know, again, you just see the execution in this offense. It's got to run by one player. That's Michael Allen, number 10. But we've seen it with Leon Johnson. We've seen it here with Geeter, how he's able to get into the end zone and have everybody out in front of him on that left side. Tar Heels with an education today in execution. The extra point is good. And the score now is 45 nothing. Is Jeter happy? Oh, pump up the volume, please. We'll be right back. College football and ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Burger King, where you get your burger's worth. And the people in attendance today at Keenan Stadium have gotten their entertainment value worth. 45 nothing, the most points ever scored by the Tar Heels against Clemson, 45. I think they're exercising some demons, losing nine out of the last 10 years. Piling up 45 points uh, makes that feel a little bit better. Clemson. A very disappointing performance today. Welch with the kickoff. Woods. Out over the 21-yard line. It's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back next week. They play Furman. Then they do get a week off before traveling to Missouri. Well, you know, the thing about this, if you're not playing well right now, they've got to pull it together. Five of their first seven games are on the road. So you've got to figure things out pretty quickly, and hopefully they can do that next week at home against Furman. Yeah, including a game at Florida State. A game you'll see on ESPN. Have a new quarterback in now for Clemson. Number 14, Brandon Streeter. A couple of new tailbacks, too. That's Sam Zanders. Tackled by Brandon Spoon, number 44. Brandon Spoon for North Carolina, the man who just made the tackle right there, is from Burlington, North Carolina. He's catching on very fast. The coaches say faster than any other freshman they've ever had. And get this, at 6'3", 225, he made the 200-meter state final in the sprints last year. That, my yeah. friends, is speed. And he came in fifth place, and he bench presses 430 pounds. They had to tell him to stop. He'd gotten <laughs> it up over 25 times. He said, okay, we believe you. You can stop now. Now, 430 he just did once, but they felt like he could add 20 pounds to it. And that's something my weight coach never had to say to me. <laughs> <laughs> I always tapped out at about two and a quarter. <laughs> Kelton Dunnigan on that last run. As we look at Matt Brown, you think about players like Spoon right there. They are starting to attract a higher caliber of recruit here at North Carolina. And I think really to fill out the pieces is, is wide receiver and quarterback. I mean, these quarterbacks are playing real well here today. But Mac Brown made a point of saying, we don't have a quarterback from this school that has started in the NFL. That's what we want. And you know what, Mark? That's how you get in the top ten. A good point. Sam Sanders that time. Push out of bounds at the 26. Folks, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge will have that for you. You see Mike Baxter with the O-line tattoo. With that kind of body, he doesn't have to worry about ever getting switched to wide receiver or running back. He can, he can keep that tattoo O-line there. 601 to play in the ball game. And I say ball game because if this game does go to overtime, then we really have a scoop. <laughs> Kevin Laird punting. Fair catch called at the 37 by Octavius Barnes. Flag down at the 34 yard line. With 5.52 to play. I don't think we need to walk through that overtime rule, do we? No. <laughs> Mark? No, no chance of it happening here today. And illegal participation on the defense. 12 men on the field. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Did they feel they needed an edge? <laughs> Perhaps they did. You know, 
That's, uh, you know, that's the rule in the pros now that the coaches can appeal. That's one of the rules that they can appeal. There's that tattoo. John, you should get one of those. Uh, no thanks. 6'4", <laughs> 297. That's why I say O-line, you will always be an offensive lineman, Mr. Baxter. Meanwhile, across the state and into South Carolina, into Clemson, South Carolina, at the Esso Club, there is no joy right now at the moment, I'm sure. One of the popular watering holes at Clemson University. The Tigers with the ball at the 40-yard line, the back side of the eye. And up is to the up back. Number 32, Dunnigan in the game. It'll be second down and seven to go. Boy, what about Colorado? Impressive today. 37 to 6. It's one of those elite teams that Blackledge was talking about on the ledge at halftime. Second down and seven. Sanders gets a good block and cuts it inside. Bobbing and weaving his way down to the 49-yard line. He looks to be right near that marker, maybe a yard short. It'll be third down and short. Jamie Carrick making the tackle that time. Tommy West team having its road winning streak snapped here this afternoon in all, all probability. Well, you got to wonder, you know, Brandon Streeter is a bright young man. He was redshirted last year, and he was a Dean's List student. <laughs> you know, you send a Dean's List student into the game, and you're down 45-0. He goes, hey, coach, you know, what do you want me to do? I think he's got it figured out. Didn't figure out that play. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. The front seven of the Tar Heels putting the beat down on the quarterback. You know, we had to wonder, Carl Torbush is the defensive coordinator, and he told us about these guys. And, you know, you walked away here in about six guys that had pro potential up front, and I think you and I scratched our heads and said, you know, are we are we getting the story here or not as you see the great penetration on that play? And, and uh, you know, certainly after today's game, and it's only one football game and it's still August, there's a lot of football to be played. But you have to be impressed with those guys up front for Carolina. There's Carl Torbush on the right side there, certainly not lending himself to hyperbola. I mean, pretty down to earth guy. And we thank Coach Torbush for his recommendation with respect to ribs. Sent us to a good spot. Kevin Laird on the punt. Octavius Barnes lets it bounce. Well, the orange is all black and blue this afternoon. Carolina blue, it's 45-0. Well, by the look of that expression, you would think it's a Clemson fan. What do you think? Daddy's wearing a light blue hat. Well, there's one person that feels worse than the Clemson football team right now. <laughs> Kid needs a little pomade. Keep that hair down a little bit. Is that what that's for? Yeah, it's, oh, it's been a bad hair day for the entire Clemson team. But Leon Johnson had a good hair day, right? He sure did. Thursday? That's right. Barbershop quartet of his. He said that he does sing. He says he sings. Oscar Davenport, the quarterback. And there's a look at Leon Johnson, who had an outstanding day with respect to running and catching the football. Leon John on. That's how you pronounce it with the idea, huh? <laughs> you are hooked on phonics, huh? You <laughs> Yale guys. <laughs> yeah. Second down and five to go, approaching the three-minute mark. This is Geeter. Geeter out to the 27-yard line, where he's brought down by Chris Jones. There were no true returning starters across the front line for Clemson. They were a little bit inexperienced up front, and it hurt them. You know, and Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, told us he was going to put the onus on his offensive line. They're the experienced guys. He said, I got an inexperienced quarterback. The offensive line, I'm telling this game's on your shoulders. And it'll be free haircuts for them next week. Third down, two to go. A 
Tavis Barnes in motion to the top of your screen. He's the intended target. Is it picked off? <laughs> it's complete. It's complete. Boy, not the way Oscar, Oscar, Oscar drove it, drew it up on the drawing board, but it got there to Crumpler. Crumpler, the tight end. Hey, <laughs> if opportunity knocks, answer the door. 82 is going to be coming across the middle. Just settling there. The ball gets thrown to Barnes on the left side, but he reacts to the football. Nothing wrong with that. React, play football. First down and 10. Geeter's looked impressive in his short time in the football game. Let's go downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, it's a family affair for Mac Brown, one of his four children. In fact, the youngest, Chris, was a ball boy last year, and Mac tells us that Chris knows all the players, knows all the information you ever need to know. In fact, said he called him on his radio show one time. <laughs> and uh, and I, he also told us, didn't he, guys, that's one way to make sure your language is clean on the sideline when your son's standing next to you. But uh, Chris, one of the boys, two boys, two girls. All right. And what do you tell him to say on the sidelines? Is that during the game, you shut up. Yeah, That's right. I don't want any suggestions. Not one word. <laughs> bad enough. It's bad enough that his lovely wife has some suggestions, suggestions for him sometimes. Right, he said Sally calls him. Gives him <laughs> ideas now that she knows the game. <laughs> Chris Jones making the tackle on Geeter that time. Mike the Coach Mac Brown can spot members of his family who disguise their voice trying to phone into his radio show. Ball at the 45-yard line. He says he doesn't listen to them, which is probably a good idea if you're a coach. To underline the, to underscore the ineptitude of the Clemson offense so, to, so far today. Last time Clemson was held to 100 yards or less was 1969. They have a total of 91 yards today. A little mix-up in the backfield. Ogridge with a carry. Eric Bradford making the tackle. 22 seconds to play. It's been a long day for Tommy West and his coaching staff for Clemson. They'll head back and regroup for next week's game against Furman. Meanwhile, for the North Carolina Tar Heels, a successful beginning to the start of another campaign. They've won 24 of their last 27 conference season openers. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Raheem Abdullah for Clemson and Leon Johnson for North Carolina. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. 